This lesson is fractions greater than 1 and regrouping. So these are two skills that you're going to really need to know when it comes time to add and subtract with mixed numbers and mixed numbers that do not have common denominators. So a little vocabulary review. Numerator and denominator, top and bottom portion of a fraction. Mixed number is a number, a whole number in a fraction together. Simplify and reduce, it's getting the smallest form of a number possible. Lowest common denominator, so that's uh, making sure that both of the fractions in your problem have the same denominator and you have them at the lowest common denominator together. Um, a multiple is a number that another number can um, multiply into without any remainders. All right, regroup. Now, that term might sound familiar because we use regrouping when we are doing subtraction. So regrouping means that we're taking something and we're making more out of it from the next place value. We'll go over a little bit more of that later in this video. Parts of a whole. So we all know that when we're talking about fractions, the bottom number is a denominator, which is how many parts are in the whole. And then the top number is the numerator, which is how many parts we have out of those parts in the whole. So it's important to know what parts of the whole are. Improper fraction and fraction greater than one, those two are the same things. They're called by two different names. It just means that the top number, the numerator, is bigger than the denominator, which means it's greater than one. So we're looking at an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one right now. What is this? 17 over three or 17 thirds. So when we're looking at this number, I can tell that this is a fraction greater than one right away because the top number, the numerator, is larger than the bottom number, which means that we have more parts than we do parts in the whole. Now, if we think about it, if our denominator is three, how many parts would make a whole? Well, three out of the three parts would make a whole. So if we have anything larger than three, we know that it's greater than one. A really great way to think about this is if you're thinking about models. So right here, I'm going to take my first one right here, three halves. Now, I know that my denominator is two, which means that I have two parts in a whole. So if I draw my model here, I know that if I have a circle, halves would mean that I cut it in half and there's two parts in the whole. So if I have three halves, that means that I have one half here, two halves here, and three halves here. That means that this right here is one whole. So I'm going to actually practice just renaming this for a second. I have one whole, which is this here. I'm done with that. And then I have here, this is half of the whole. So three halves is the same thing as saying one and one half. If I'm looking at this fraction down here, 8 sixths, I know that it's more than a, one whole because if our denominator is 6, that means that it's more than one whole. So if I'm looking at my model right here, I have 8 parts out of 6. So that means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, 7, 8. This is one whole. So if I practice renaming it, I have one whole and I have two out of the six parts here. So two sixth. And if we're practicing our simplifying, we know that two sixth can be simplified to a smaller number. Think about that for a second. What could I simplify two sixth down to? Well, let's see, what can I divide both of these numbers by? Well, I could divide two by two and six by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So really, 8 sixths can be also known as 1 and 1 third. All right, so let's try this one for a second. 5 halves. I know right off the bat my numerator is bigger, which means I have more than one whole. So a way to think about this is by saying to yourself, how many times can I make one whole? If I know that my denominator is 2, 
I know that two halves make one whole. How many times can I make two halves out of this number? Well, I take away two halves. Five minus two gives me three halves. That's one whole. I'm still greater than one here, so I'm going to subtract another two halves. Three halves minus two halves gives me another one whole, and I still have one half left over. So if I add all of these things together, one plus one equals two, I have two and one half. So five halves is the same thing as two and one half. All right, example number two here, and please make sure that you're taking your notes while we're doing this, writing down the important information. I am gonna ask you to pause the video in just a second so you can solve this, but we'll set it up together. So 15 halves, my numerator is bigger than my denominator, which means that I have more than one whole. So I have to think about, if my denominator is seven, what would make one whole? Well, seven sevenths would equal one whole. So I have to think about how many times can I get one whole out of 15 sevenths. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work it out, and see what you get. All right, hopefully you paused the video and you worked this out. So let's, let's work it out together. So 15 sevenths minus 7 sevenths. That's one whole. I know that 15 minus 7 gives us 8 sevenths. That gives us one whole right here. I'm going to put it down here. Then I still have more than one here, so I'm going to subtract another 7 sevenths. 8 sevenths minus 7 sevenths equals 1 seventh. So I have another whole to add down here. And then I still have the 1 seventh right here. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. And I have 1 seventh left over. So if I'm looking, I know that 15 sevenths is also equal to 2 and 1 seventh. And hopefully you got that correct. All right, let's try one more. Again, pause the video, see if you can figure this out. How many holes do you get out of 27 fifths? Okay, so you pause the video, let's work it out together. Now, one easy way that I could do this without having to subtract five fifths over and over and over again is I think about it. How many times can five go into 27 evenly? Well, I know that five times five is 25. So I know that if I put five into 27 five whole times, then I know that I get 25 fifths. Well, if I subtract 27 fifths minus 25 fifths, I get a leftover of two fifths. Now, is that greater than one whole? No, nope, I don't think so. So that means that five and two fifths is the same thing as saying 27 fifths. Now let's look at our fraction here. Can we simplify two fifths into a smaller fraction? I have to think about, can I divide 2 and 5 by anything to make them smaller? No, I can't. So 5 and 2 fifths would be our answer. All right, so we've learned how to rename a fraction greater than 1 into a mixed number. Now, another really important thing that we're going to have to learn is how to regroup a fraction. There's two ways that we can do this, and I'm going to show you both ways in just a second. But first, I think it's really important that you know why we need to know how to regroup a fraction. We'll say that you're subtracting a, num a number like 2 and 1 fifth minus 1 and 3 fifth. Well, I have the same denominator, so that's pretty easy. I already know that my denominator is going to be a 5 no matter what. But I'm looking at my fraction now. I can't subtract 1 minus 3, so I need to figure out a way that I can subtract these fractions. Well, the answer is regroup. All right, so to regroup, I want you to think about it like this. Think about it like these are place values. The fractions place is one place value, and then the wholes are one place value. So if I 
have a fraction 3 4 and for whatever reason I need to regroup so that I have more in my numerator what I have to do is I have to borrow one whole from this 2 so I'm looking here and I know my denominator is a 4 so if I borrow one whole from a two, I need to make sure that I have the same denominator so I can add it to this fraction. If I took one whole from two and I need to have the denominator as a four, what would my numerator be? Well, four fourths is the same thing as one whole. So if I take a whole from here, this number now becomes a one. And if I add these fractions together, four plus three, equals 7 and and our denominator would still be 4 so 2 and 3 fourths is the same thing as 1 and 7 fourths now you might notice the 7 is a fraction greater than 1 we wouldn't need to regroup unless we were doing a problem like we talked about before where you couldn't subtract because the number on top was smaller. So this would be the only case that you would need to do this. Now you might be wondering, what was the other way that I was talking about before? Huh. Well, you could also just change the whole number, the whole mixed number, into a fraction greater than 1 or an improper fraction there is a trick to doing this. So to change a number into an improper fraction, you keep the same denominator that the fraction has. So that's your first step. Then you multiply the bottom and add the top. So let me show you. Six times six is 36. And if I add four, 36 plus four is 40. So 46 would be the improper fraction to match 6 and 4 6. Now what if I wanted to regroup and practice just borrowing from the 6? Well, if I take one whole from the 6, I would make this a 5. And if I add one whole to this, I know I have to have the same denominator, so I need to have a 6. What would be a whole that would equal 1? Well, 6 over 6. So, if I added 4 6 plus 6 6, I would get 10 6. So, 5 and 10 6. You could do either way, but just remember, if you wanted to change to an improper fraction, multiply and then add. All right, my math magicians, it is now time to go show what you learned. Go to Canvas to take your quiz for the lesson on fractions greater than one. If you don't feel like you're ready, go ahead and review the slides again. Look at your notes. Good luck, and I hope you do well.